Hey guys, how's it going? I had a good question from a viewer recently, so he asked me to do a video about this, so here we go. We're talking about these General Motors trucks like the Silverado and the GMCs, the mid-80s trucks that had a carbureted engine and had a lockup con torque converter, had a transmission with a lockup torque converter in them. That's predominantly from like about 1981 through 1986. Uh, those trucks changed over to TBI fuel injection for model year 1987, even though they retained the old body style. That's a unique year. So when that happened, uh, the control for the torque converter, the lockup, changed over to being fully electronic. So this will not apply to an 87 or later vehicle. Now, a lot of these trucks are running around with no lockup anymore, partially because people just didn't understand how to operate, how to connect the, the controls for them, or the other half don't want lockup because it's a hot rod and who needs lockup? So, so what? But anyway, there's people that want to get this working right because, you know, it helps your gas mileage a little bit and sometimes makes the transmission run a little bit cooler. So let's talk about this. Let's find out how to operate this, how to get it operational. Now this is a very simple system. It just uses a vacuum switch mounted on the firewall of the truck. Now if we look over here in this picture, if you can look at this kind of close, here's a brake booster. This is the left-hand driver side of the firewall. And here is this, get in a little closer here, again. Put you down there, have a operate my camera here so if you look at this this is the driver side firewall on one of these square body trucks and this guy you're looking for is right here this is called the TCC vacuum switch and it's a very simple operation you have a vacuum source to one side of it this happens to have a check valve in it and then you'll normally have a harness connected or a plug where a plug can plug into on the other side of that switch Here's what the switch looks like. They sell these new, actually. You can see it's pretty thin. Uh, it's pretty thin. Wire harness plugs in here. Vacuum line plugs in here. There's another view of it. It's got a metal bracket on it. So, anyhow, the way this works is, like I said, you have a vacuum source. To the uh, one side of it you have wires come out the other side so uh, when the truck's running you have one side of this switch has got 12 volts to it supplied by the fuse box through the ignition switch and then the other side is an output it's simply going to connect the 12 volts going in and it's going to when the switch is closes and I'm about to explain to you how how it's going to know when to close then it's going to the circuit's going to complete. It's going to send 12 volts back out. That second line goes down to the uh, transmission. Now on these torque converters, these lockup converters on these 350s and 700 R4s, all it takes to operate that lockup is a single source, 12 volt source, single wire with 12 volts to it. So uh, that's all it takes. You apply 12 volts to one side of the switch, it locks up. The other side is grounded through the case of the transmission. So that's very simple. Can be more simple. And the other side of this, you say, well, where do you get the vacuum source from? You need to hook this to a ported source of ported vacuum. That means a source of vacuum which is not present at idle. That is because the way this switch works is that it has to close and operate the lockup under certain conditions. If you don't want it to lock up at idle with high vacuum and you want it to unlock when you cramp down on the gas. Now if you know about vacuum, you know about engine vacuum, you know how it works. You know that vacuum is highest at idle, manifold vacuum is highest at idle uh, because of the location. It's pulled directly off the intake tract under the carburetor, butterflies. and then as load on the engine increases the vacuum signal goes away so this thing is calibrated this vacuum switch is calibrated when it starts seeing a decrease in vacuum 
to a certain point it's going to break the connection and it's going to turn off the lockup so like when you're in high gear and you start going up an incline or a grade or whatever and you're going more and more on the accelerator when it gets to the vacuum signal gets to a certain point it's going to break the connection it's going to drop out of lockup then when you get back on flat ground and your vacuum signal let off the gas and your vacuum signal goes back up it's going to lock back up again you see how that works now you say well why do you need ported vacuum well like i told you the you don't want that va ported vacuum is the source for ported vacuum is right there at the butterflies where the in line or just above where the butterfly is the carburetor butterflies are so it does not generate a vacuum signal until you start opening the throttle up to a certain degree and then your vacuum signal comes on so that's why you use ported vacuum for like ignition advance and EGR operation and things like that so it's like called they call it timed vacuum in other words so make sure you don't hook this thing to port it to a I'm sorry to a manifold vacuum source so you know like the little tree on the back of the, the manifold it's got vacuum lines coming off of it don't hook it to that one don't hook don't hook it to the one that the modulator valve if it's got one where it's hooked to don't hook it to that one you can usually on a quad most of these trucks got a quadri jet on them you can usually find uh ported or time vacuum either what's the way you want to call it the quadri jet's usually on the left front of the carburetor facing you if you're looking in from the radiator side at the front of the engine at the front of the carburetor look on the It'd be your right side, but it'd be the driver's side of facing the carburetor. Usually about halfway up the body of the carburetor, there's a port right there. And that thing usually always feeds if you got a vacuum advance, it feeds that, it feeds EGR. So if you're not sure though, if what you're looking for is really simple to figure it out, just get a vacuum gauge and hook it to each of the ports till you find one that has no signal at idle but it has one when you rev the engine up a bit you see the vacuum gauge suddenly go up that's the one you want to run this so here's another thing uh, you need to look at your transmission now these trucks they're all they're getting to be 30 years old plus now so they don't always have the original transmission still in them so if you don't have a lockup transmission in there anymore then there's no point trying to get this thing working because it's not going to work. You have to, it won't have a lockup converter in it. Um, now you can look if you look on the left side of the transmission case. Um, now these should always should always have a plug right here because that's just where all the electrical connection is. If my memory serves me correctly, if not, somebody correct me. But uh, you've got a reverse switch somewhere. I don't know that this uses reverse in the transmission though. I thought that was. I thought that was on the, I think on those that's actually in the cab, so this may be, if you don't have lockup, this thing may well not even be here. But get in there and look, and if you got a turbo 350, you may only have one wire in there, somewhere like a little wire connection, but if you've got a, uh, if you got a turbo 700R4, you may have more in there. I see this one's got three, so just take a gander at it and see. Now there's different things going on in the transmission that I don't need to confuse you with they've got what's called a pressure switch they've got a fourth gear if it's a 700 they've got a fourth gear pressure switch a third gear pressure switch and all that does is you don't even need to worry about that that just that just allows the lockup to work in third gear at certain conditions and fourth gear so don't worry about that your your main concern is to make sure that your harness is connected into the transmission down here and then to make sure your vacuum switch is connected on the firewall to a ported 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 vacuum source and that thing should work now here's another gotcha when you look at these trucks here now these things are known to have uh, looking at the firewall and you have to envision this because i don't have a picture handy but you're gonna to have to envision that if you look over on the passenger side of the firewall you're likely to find on different trucks you're likely to find another vacuum looks like another something very similar to this that's sitting there 
Uh, looks like it should have a vacuum line going to it. And about 90% of them now don't have a vacuum line going to them because you know how it is. Guys don't like vacuum lines because it's smog, it lowers power, it's evil, it's not cool. La, 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 la. So anyway, what that thing is, is on certain trucks that have a 305 engine, that switch that's on the passenger side of the firewall is called a tip-in vacuum switch, and it has something to do with the timing. It temporarily retards the timing. So no, that's not this. That's not this. So anyway, so if you plug the wrong right one into a vacuum line and the lockup doesn't work, well, that's why. So. All right, guys, I hope this has explained this adequately and also you may want to consider using this arrangement you know these you guys that have hot rods and stuff that you want the converter lockup to work on you know you see all these posts on the internet about people say well all you gotta do is just put a toggle switch on the dash somewhere to activate lockup now that's all right but you tell me how long is it going to be before you slow down to a stop and forget to unlock that converter and it kills the engine and how long is it going to be before you start getting really tired of that thing uh, having to unlock and lock that torque converter with a toggle switch? It's going to get that's going to get old quick. So here's what you can do: uh, you can wire this with one of these switches here, and this is a computer post. Uh, let me get above this guy's name a little bit, but let's see where we are. Let's see if I can zoom in here. On something. I'll tell you what, I'll let you look at that and I'm going to click something here and see. If this guy says that Rock Auto has these. Okay. Now you'll have to do your own looking up here, but I'll help you. Uh, this says this is AC Delco part number 212331. Uh, the alternate. OEM part number is 1403-2087. So you can also get these back off of a, you know, go to the junkyard and look on one of these mid-80s trucks and look for these. So if you got one of these hot rods you built, you know, something you've put all this stuff in and it's not original anymore, but you want to lock lockup, then you can simply get the harness to plug in on one side and get all the stuff off a truck and just put it together like I'm explained to you. And you should have converter lockup automatically without having to screw with any damn toggle switch. I wouldn't do that. So anyway, this should work. Now this is assuming all your components are in operating order. Um, now these transmissions, you know, GM lockup solenoids, there's a solenoid in the valve body that, or somewhere in the transmission usually in the valve body that, uh, operates the lockup clutch and the converter. Now these are known to fail. You've, you've all heard of these Cavaliers and that Sentry that I had for a while and all these cars that have that problem. So if you hook all this up and it works and then all of a sudden it acts like it ain't unlocking, don't get upset and say you told me the wrong thing. You know, go unplug the connector at the you know, unplug it temporarily and see if that condition resolves itself. And if it does, then you know you probably need to go ahead and replace the lockup solenoid in the transmission. It's not a hard job, it's just messy. Alright guys, well ask any questions you want to and any of you that know a lot about this stuff and you see something that I've said wrong, please let me know and I'll correct it. So, or you can correct it. Uh, I'm glad for that to happen. Because we're all here to impart knowledge and you know, just quickly, I'll say that it's, sometimes it's hard for us to believe that these old 30, year, 30 and 40 year old cars and trucks, things that no longer work on them actually did work and worked well when they were new. That's like all these vacuum operated cruise controls and, you know, lock up and air conditioning, stuff like that. Believe it or not, back then you bought a new car and it all worked. So that's why I encourage everybody to not not give up so easily you know it might take a little bit of effort and some learning but we'll get all this stuff working again so thanks for watching everybody we'll see you down the road on another video take care